All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Another joint commentary. I am joined again by my buddy Lantern Rouge. Welcome back, Lantern Rouge. Cycling fans globally, welcome back to the greatest YouTube collaboration I think we've seen to date. <laughs> it's another installment of uh, Australia versus United States. We didn't quite get to 20,000 likes so far. I think it's going to get a second wind, but you're safe. You don't have to book that ticket to come to the United States and, and race me. So maybe this one, if this one gets to 20,000 likes, what do you think? Offer stand? Oh, I, meant it, I mentioned the aggregate, so in the aggregate across all our collaborations. So this, this one will hit 2,000 in, in a week. It's all good. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah, because we got actually a really cool race today. I'm excited to talk about this one. I've been sitting on this one for a while, and I finally got around to uh, blowing the dust off of it. This is the Smoketown Masters Criterium. Uh, it's the 35 plus 123 sent in by our buddy Justin. Um, he sent in some other videos. He's on Team R-Cubed, although he doesn't have any teammates in this race. This is a pretty cool course. This is, uh, as you can see, it's hot dog style. It's real windy. Right to left wind on the uh, home stretch. No curbs. Good pavement, real fast. Yeah, and it's a it's a slight false flat, I think, on the on the last sprint or on the sprint. I think it's five hundred meters out of the last corner. So false flat, cross headwind, five hundred meters from the last corner. That's ringing alarm bells about going too early. Definitely, and we're going to talk a lot about positioning today. And for those of you who are thinking, like, you know, how do I position myself for a sprint? I don't have the power. I'm not a sprinter. I can't do it. It's much, much less about the power and much more about the position and all of those tiny uh, last minute decisions in the last 10, 15 minutes of the race that we're going to get into specifically like the last five minutes of the race. So um, let's dive into uh, the last couple of laps uh, just to let you know what's been going on. The, um, the race has been real fast, a lot of attacking. There's two guys off the front. So this is the field sprint for third. The field is about half how it started because the conditions have been so hard. So let's uh, let's fast forward. We've got two or so laps to go, and uh, and let's talk about it. All right, guys, this is about two and a half laps to go. He's just rounding the hairpin into the start finish straightaway, which, like we mentioned, is um, very slightly uphill. But most importantly, there's a strong right to left crosswind. What do you think, Lantern? I think it's important to remember that Justin ought to know in advance that Justin has a big kick. He's got 1,300 watt power for 13 seconds. We've seen the proof of that. We're not just trusting him on those numbers. And that means he can win this sprint or this field sprint if he gets in the right position. But I feel like this is the moment now where he should be moving up. And if we pause or if we rewind to that corner a little bit, we'll see that what the, that Trek rider, see that Fluoro Trek rider? He's in the shelter. So the shelter's on the left-hand side of the road. And for, you know, I know that Justin's just done 700 watts out of that corner, but everyone comes off the gas right now. And if you just keep pedaling at 200 watts, keep pedaling, or not even pedaling if you're just in the right spot, 814 moves up for almost six, seven places. And you know he's not doing hardly anything. He's just carrying his speed. And I like how he gives that guy a little reminder, just like, hey, I'm here. He wasn't pushing him. He just kind of gave him like a little touch, like, hey, don't, you know, don't cross my front wheel sort of thing. Yeah, and I think that guy was waving his back wheel around a little bit. So that's smart racing. If you're not, you know, call out, I'm on your left, or put, put your hand on their butt just to let them know. And you can do that as well, even if you're trying to get into gaps and be a little bit sneaky yourself. What I'll do is I'll yell at people like, I'm on your right, which kind of serves the same purpose. Because I think some people will kind of blur that line between like, hey, I'm touching you on your hip to let you know I'm here. And hey, I'm pushing you out of my way, which is unacceptable, by the way. I know people that do that. And it's... um. First of all, it's against the rules. And second of all, um, it can be really dangerous if somebody's not expecting it. Yeah, you could push somebody into another rider, for example. But anyway, he did it the right way. And we can now see, as we've, as we've been talking, Justin has lost probably 10 spots just by, just by virtue of that. We can't even see Fluoro Trek anymore, 814. He's now in, I would say, the top 12 spots. And Justin's, what, 20th, 22nd? So with 2,800 meters left, 2,900 meters left, what just under two laps to go this is not ideal and f for positioning for him i would definitely be starting to think like what can i do to move up because you're kind of still in the position where you can move up efficiently and you're not like desperately just getting out in the wind and sprinting but you have to be really smart about it and you have to choose the right lines and and right here is a good opportunity because now they're on the back side of the course which um it's which means it's a left to right win so he's He's looking on the right-hand side of the road here, which is good because that's sheltered. But um, he really needs to be thinking about moving up on the right here. Instead, he's just coasting. Well, I just have my stopwatch out. 
and I was timing that. I think he's free wheeled for like 12, 14 seconds on this back straight with the tailwind. And I think, you know, we've got a grassy verge to the right hand side. I'm not, no one is guarding wheels particularly closely. I think that was the opportunity for him to take take up some free spots with some calculated risks. I don't think anything crazy was required just because these gaps are so big. And case in point right now, two thirds of the way down this back straight, we've got Lars Bohm in the Astana kit in the off season just ahead of him. And that wheel is there to be taken. Yeah, there's. I'm glad you pointed that out. There is a reason I paused it right here. And I was just about to say the same thing. That guy up in the Astana kit, I was going to say the guy in the white, but you went one better. The guy in the Astana, teal Astana kit up there. That is like, he. that is a beacon of light up the road. Like, get on my wheel. He needs to close this gap. It's the sheltered side of the road. This guy with the uh, red shoes, he's let this gap open to his right. And this is just begging for, for Justin to, to fill um, and move up to the Astana guy's wheel. Instead, he just decides to keep coasting, which is beyond me. That was a great opportunity right there. And I know some people might comment. Some people might comment saying, oh, well, he just... You know, he would have had to sprint into that gap. And it's like, well, no, if he'd actually been pedaling at 150, 180 watts when everyone else wasn't pedaling before then, and then he could have actually just surfed into that gap carrying a little bit more speed than the orange bike guy who was also freewheeling. Exactly. Like instead of going, instead of going like the 25, 26 miles an hour, if he just would have, would have put in, like you said, 150, 200 watts instead of freewheeling, he would have been going 27, 28 miles an hour, which is all it takes to, to pass like four or five guys. And he would have been in much better position, like literally like six six spots ahead, which is um, which is huge with, you know, a lap and a half to go. Oh, and by the way, the riders that came first and second in this field sprint were level with that Astana rider. I don't want to foreshadow what's going to happen too much, but they, they were level with that Astana rider. And I think that that does make a big difference. And you'll see the distance that between those riders in the at the end of this sprint, and it is about the distance between him and that Astana rider. Yep. Oh, another moment. I'm going to pause it again. So when you see it fan out like this, that means it's not going fast, and that means it's a good opportunity to move up. Everyone's getting hit with this kind of head crosswind, and everyone's just kind of sitting up. You see it's all kind of bunched up on the left, and that's because um, it's echeloning. It's, it's a right-to-left wind. Everyone wants to be sheltered, but carrier speed you know he shouldn't be doing 150 200 watts right here i would be i would be pushing um pushing threshold if not more because this is a great opportunity to to improve your position oh the left is so open right here especially as you know what side of the road do you want to be on for the for the upcoming corner which is now in 250 meters 300 meters you want to be on the inside of that corner if you really want to bomb it and be in good position and not have your line cut off which we might see a bit later. So yeah, it's it is a multitude of reasons why flowing up on the left was a good idea. Shelter from the wind, and you'll get a better line through the next corner. Yeah, and now he's finding himself on the wrong side of the road f- for two different reasons. One, he's not preparing himself for this corner, and two, he's he's eating a whole bunch of headwind. Um, so now he's getting to that position that I mentioned earlier, which is like a little bit desperation um, because now I don't know if he has the luxury to move up in an efficient way with, um, with less than a lap to go. You just absolutely have to move up. And um, if that means getting out in the wind, then that's what you have to do because position is, is paramount. This is the key. Mo- this is the key moment of the race for me. This is all oh, for the, for this sprint. I-, I feel like, did you see that gap too? Yeah. I feel like this is, this is where you've got to sharpen the elbows up a little bit. And I'm not, I'm not endorsing like overly aggressive racing. You know, we all, we all got families and, and jo- real jobs to go to. But this is a sprint. I, I don't think these are dangerous gaps to be feeling. I think it's pretty reasonable to, to get into this gap, um, especially if you want to be contesting it at the pointy end of the race. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would have just watched right through that and not realized this, but it stood out to me. This moment right here, Um, so you have 1160 meters to go. You have to be, you have to be tight. You have to be on that wheel. And I know the GoPro makes it look like it's further away than it is. Um, but, uh, but this is still a considerable gap. I mean, it's a bike length. It's at least a bike length to this guy in the black and green is what I'm talking about. And, and he can't let the guy in the cliff bar kit on the right fill that he needs to, to close that, get his handlebars in front of the guy in the cliff bar kit and assert his position on on green and black and that way he's passing like what three riders four riders 
And you got to you got to also think about. I'm I'm watching this this still right now, and I feel like there's there's three vertical lines of riders on the left in front of us, and the left line is going to be the slowest, the middle second slowest, and the the line with this black and green kit in front of us, and then the fluoro boots in front of him. That's going to be the fastest because it's shielded from the wind. So I feel like throughout this pretty long back straight with the tailwind, that's going to be the quickest line to, to that will actually move up spots. And he's just got to get glued on that guy's wheel and just put his handlebars, as you said, in front of Cliff Bar. Cliff Bar was giving, you know, Cliff Bar's not been aggressively glued yeah. to the wheel either. So he's willing to be persuaded that, you know, if someone's right on that wheel there, well, then he'll probably won't. We won't have issue with that. This is also the fastest line because it, the road kind of does this little wiggle to the right also. So you're able to hit the apex when it when it's, um, comes to the right. But instead he lets it go. Uh, and, um, and then he kind of loses the cliff bar guy's wheel too. So he's just, not, he's just not quite as sharp as he needs to be. Now he's playing catch up. So now here's the, here's, here's the big mistake, which is um, instead of moving up, you know, five positions like we talked about, on that guy you can still see him up there in the black and green kit almost for free like maybe at two or three hundred watts now he's out in the wind pushing six or seven hundred watts to move up the same amount so um so that really cost him that's uh those are your sprint legs and then he kind of gets pushed up a bit into the grass right there he really should have just uh, you know asserted his position a little bit more and let's see and then he should have been on that guy's wheel i think that's the second biggest moment yeah, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. you got to make a decision here, like, who has more right to the wheel on the right-hand side of the road? It's Justin. It Like, he's he's on that guy's wheel pretty much right now. And, like, if, if Justin's right on the guy on the right-hand side's wheel and the guy on the left comes across and tries to chop him, well, that's not okay. That's I mean, it, Justin's on that wheel. So I think he has every right to stick on that wheel and aggressively stick there as well. And at worst, if he doesn't want to, you know, if he... Not everyone wants to do that. If he doesn't want to stick on it, at worst he has to get onto the V-Sox wheel and make sure he follows up that right-hand side. He can't let all their wheels go. The fact that he's now, this is what, two, three bike lengths, and these guys sort of, they get on the next train, and now Justin's really not got a wheel. He's really not got a wheel th to, to follow in a headwind sprint, which makes it almost impossible, like... Unless you're a Superman, you're not winning. You're not doing 500 meters on your own, catching up to people who are 10 meters ahead of you. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before. Like, you could be you could be a world class sprinter, but if you're like outside of you know 10, 15 meters from the front rider uh, as the sprint opens up, like that is just an impossible gap to close. And you're going to see why in a second. But first, I wanted to look at this corner one more time because you have these guys that are leading the race who. Um, take a much better line to this corner especially track especially fluoro bike fluoro bike takes a brilliant brilliant line yeah he took a really good line in fact he he's able able to pedal through it because he takes such a good line and if you're on the outside you can see the result of that uh justin gets pushed really wide through here he can't pedal through the corner um he's losing speed and then even worse as he exits the corner is you're gonna get pushed wide like people are just gonna take the corner who are on the front, they're going to take it the best way possible, which is from the outside to the apex to the outside again. Well, he's now boxed in on the wrong sort of on the wrong side of the road with people sprinting ahead of him who aren't don't have his power, aren't as good as him. Because look, he's held a thousand watts for like five seconds there, and we're, that's not the end of it. Two hundred meters left, so still quite a long way left. <laughs> These guys have been sprinting for ages. But he's sort of, he's gassed at this point because he had to sprint pretty much out, out of that corner. I think, you know, Justin's doing big numbers. Um, but I think, yeah, the positioning's cost him. Because if he'd, if he'd stayed on this guy's wheel, this guy, I mean, the second green guy, the guy that came second in this, in this field sprint, I think if Justin had got onto his wheel on the back straight and really stuck on it, I reckon he wins that sprint. Because then... You know, he has a wheel to follow through the corner. He's protected initially through the corner in the headwind. He doesn't have to do 1,300 watts just to even stay with the pack. And then he can drop drop 1,300 watts on them when these guys who got tired at the end, because 
they got exposed a little bit themselves, but there was just no one coming around them. Yeah, it's not so much about the power, it's about the position. And you can see a result of that here. I guarantee you that Justin had bigger numbers than any of these guys that he was surrounded by. I mean, obviously he passed a bunch of guys. We know he's got bigger numbers than them. But even these two guys that finished in front of him, if it was a head-to-head sprint, Justin's got them smoked. Like 1,350 watts. For sure. Uh, peak followed by like whatever that was six seven seconds of like 1200 like those are big numbers yeah but the tr- the fluoro trek you know conversely he gained 10 meters just through the corner it's about both but honestly if i were to have to if i were to have to pick one i would go positions more important than watts because um maybe in lower categories four and five you can kind of get away with making mistakes and just using raw power to to um get back into position but higher categories even you know cat three cat two cat one especially like you just can't make mistakes like that you can have the biggest ftp motor biggest sprint numbers in the uh in the field but if you make a bunch of mistakes you're just going to get dusted lantern always good having you on man um your wealth of information i appreciate it Thanks for having me on. As again, NorCal, always enjoy these videos. Make sure to drop a like on the video. Check us both out on Instagram. Comment what other races you'd like to see. Would you like seeing these bunch sprints? Do you want breakaway tactics? Do you want game theory? What do you want, global cycling fans? Thanks, guys. See you at the next one.